Welcome back to The Graham Stephan Show. So this is a video I never thought I would be reacting to, but today we're going to be watching Shelby Church's dad. <laughs> That's right, she made her own episode of Millennial Money, except the Boomer Edition. With uh, this episode right here, it's titled Living on $43,000 a Year in Seattle. Wait for it, Boomer Money. Except it really should have been called Boomer Money. Box. If you guys agree with me, just do me a favor and destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And once you've done that, let's begin. I think money is very important and it can control you or you have to control it. It's very simple about um, making sure you don't spend more than you have coming in. Ah, very wise words. And already I have to say, Shelby Church has incredible B-roll shots. I have to say, like the cinematic take that she's taken on this so far is Great. And look at this. He's, he's putting gas in his car. I'm wondering uh, what is it? Convertible. Uh, I can't see what car that is. Definitely it takes premium though. My name is Mike. I live in Seattle. My last full year of working as a high school teacher in 2015, my gross annual pay was 72000 a year. Here we go. So he said, by the way, his last full year, so this is probably he's retired right now or he's doing like part-time work, but either way, it seems to me kind of taking the gas off the pedal a little bit. He's probably got a lot of investments. He's living off that passive income lifestyle. Let's see. This video is sponsored by Chime, an award-winning- This video is brought to you by Bankroll Coffee now for sale. Bankrollcoffee.com. That's right, guys. If you want the least expensive coffee shipped right to your door, bankrollcoffee.com. Mike taught high school history for 34 years in the Seattle area. Today. Wow, 34 years as a teacher. That's a, that's a fantastic career. Now, I'm wondering that the benefits, they have to be good, decent, right? I'm imagining, especially after that long. Today, he lives mostly off his pension and social security. He has not withdrawn his 401k or Roth IRA. That's great. See, to be able to live off social security, my guess is that's probably, I don't know, $2,500 a month from that. Then there's a pension on top of that, maybe an extra grand. And then it just depends how much he has in the 401k, but uh, that's a good nest egg. <laughs> With my pension and social security, I'm bringing home about 3,600 a month. Ooh, I was really close between those two. Look at that. Oh, duh, it's right here. Social security, 2,000, I said 2,500. Pension, 1,600, I said like, you know, 18, I don't know what I said. Maybe an extra grand? I, I forgot, my memory is terrible. But uh, yeah, it's not bad. To supplement my income, I substitute usually a couple days a week and I make $200 a day gross on that job. That's not bad, and here's the thing. There's no way, I, I'm a firm believer that, th that the moment you retire, I've heard so many stories that like, as soon as you do nothing, your brain just starts to like whittle away, you get bored. I, I think having something, even if it's not for the money, even if he's just got a schedule, is probably a really good thing. Here's how I budget my money, the old school handwritten down method. <laughs> this is the, the boomer way to do it. Millennial money does all the fancy graphs. We got the boomer way, it's just like a napkin. Just write it down. For our house mortgage, I pay $3,000 a month and I pay an extra $400. All right, so we got a $3,000 a month mortgage. I'm wondering how long he has left on that mortgage until the home is paid off. And then that $3,000 is all his. Uh, then we got utilities, $238, not bad. Insurance, $142, not bad. He's got a clean driving record, most likely, for that insurance rate, so that's good. T TV, $202 a month TV. He spends T. Don't tell me he has cable. No way. Uh-uh. We got. We just need YouTube and Netflix, maybe Hulu, maybe Amazon Prime. That's it. That's all we need on that. Gas, fifty dollars a month on gas. It's nothing. And then, oh, 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 wow, two thousand dollars a month on entertainment. What is so entertaining that you can't be more entertained on with YouTube? So, uh, all right, let's, let's see what the entertainment is. F phone bill, two hundred seven dollars a month for a phone. But come on, that's actually too high. That's way, unless he's got a family plan with like five people on it. You should, let for, listen, for one person, I pay, I think it's $50 a month with Boost Mobile, unlimited everything for $50 a month. Fantastic, never once had an issue with it. So this is, that's gotta get down. Groceries, 250, not bad. Let me get some gas on number seven. This is the best gas price that you'll find in South Seattle that I know of. Well, I tell you, it's an Audi. There you go, premium. I spent about 50 bucks of gas on this car, the Audi, a month. My energy bill for gas. Wait a second. Gas price. <laughs> Wait a second. Look at this. So in one, he had a mustache. And the other one, he didn't. I'm wondering. I bet the mustache part was filmed first. 
And then she's like, oh, crap, Dad, we, we, got, we forgot the B-roll. We got to get the B-roll. And he's just like, oh, crap. Well, this is coming out. A little over 200 a month. Our cell phone bill, and I, I have a new cell phone I'm paying on a monthly basis. It's around 150 a month. Ah, uh, okay, that's why. Okay, so it's $150 a month for a cell phone plan. Uh, so it's probably he's got like a new iPhone. He's doing the installment plan, 0% interest. That's fine, but that's why it's so much. Cable and internet is around 200 a month. Oh, see, TV and internet's the same thing. Thanks for the clarification there. On a credit card, that can range anywhere from 3,000, maybe 2,500, to clear up to 6,000. That's pretty much it. We have garbage. At least he's getting the points, though, for putting it on the credit card. So props to that. And then he could use those miles to uh, just to travel. So that's what I'd do and it was right after Christmas. We got married on December 27th. So there were Christmas trees that they were giving away on Christmas lots. So we grabbed six or seven of them and we put red bows and twinkly lights on them. Oh, that makes me so happy to hear. Look at that. By the way, oh, he's kept the mustache. He, he looks almost the exact same. How did that happen? It's just like if he dyed his hair back and dyed his mustache, just very little difference between, I don't know, what, the, what this is, 30 years ago, 35 years ago. He looks the same, but this wedding, th that's a smart idea. You don't need to go all overboard with the wedding. Look at this, that's perfect, saving the money. The money's better used for a down payment on a house anyway. We had our reception following the wedding. How does he have such good hair? That's, that's what I'm always curious about, because I notice like, you know, late 20s, your, your hair starts to thin out. It's, it, it's not fun, but how is he, able to get such a strong hairline throughout these entire years. I don't know how old he is. He's got to be, you know, 60 something, uh, maybe late fifties, but uh, gosh, the, the good genetics. At the Seattle Aquarium and my brother-in-law worked for the aquarium and he was able to lease the entire aquarium for the entire night for around a hundred dollars. Oh, I would love that. That's fun. The, the aquarium. Who wouldn't want to go and get married and have a reception at the aquarium? That sounds great. We found a house for sale by owner on Queen Anne in the old neighborhood, and they were just little bungalows. <laughs> that is like the quintessential dad outfit of like 1990. <laughs> every dad, or like the late 1980s, every dad is a picture like that. It's not like tanned. Oh man. It was for sale for $85,000. The house in Queen Anne was a two-story bungalow with the upstairs living space was around 1,200 square feet. And it was really old, but we loved it. And we ended up getting it. That's awesome. Ooh, that's so cool to, to show the picture of the house and then bloop. Oh man, I, I wonder if they still own it. That would be cool uh, to be able to buy that house back. I've wanted to do that. I actually went, uh, when was this? About two years ago, I went to my childhood house and I wanted to buy it. And so I went to them and I, it was so nerve wracking, but I went there and I knocked on the door and they opened up, they were super skeptical of me. And I was like, hey, I know this is super weird, but I grew up here in this house as a kid. Here's a few pictures just to prove that I'm not like some crazy person. Uh, I'd like to make an offer on your house if you're considering to sell it. And she said, funny enough, well, we've been thinking about moving back to the UK and you know, we're not sure about it. So, you know, we don't know what's gonna happen, but if we do move to the UK, we would consider selling it. And I was like, hey, I know this is super weird, but I haven't seen this house in like 15 years. Any chance I could take a walk through? It's so trippy. Cause I was like, I, how old was I when we moved out of that house? I don't know, 15, 16 years old, something like that. And uh, yeah, walked through the house. I texted them an offer. They ghosted me. And like, it w was not a low offer by any means. It was like all closed in 30 days, pre-approved, like 35, 40% down. Good to go, here's proof of fun. Like I gave them everything, but it would be fun if she bought this house. Okay, this house is now estimated on Redfin as a little over a million dollars. Wow, a million dollars. See, that's the thing with real estate that, that spooks me, okay? Every single person who invests in real estate that I've ever spoken to says that their biggest regret was selling anything. They said that they would have made way more money had they just never sold anything that they bought. So I've taken that approach. I, I've never sold anything so far. Uh, there's been a few that I've con thought about selling, but overall, everyone I hear says don't sell anything, so uh, I just never sell anything. Um, I completely changed all the siding on the outside. The siding around the front and all down the side, all the exterior. <sighs> they should knock on the door and get a tour of the inside. 
I bet, I listen, if someone knocked on my door and was like, hey, I know this is weird, I used to live here, I'd probably just say, hey, we'll schedule a time you can come back, take a look at the house. I wouldn't mind. We started looking at houses in the suburbs that were almost twice as big, brand new, honestly, a little better place to raise kids. What a difference between that location and these houses here. I mean, it looks like night and day between the two. But you did get a mortgage on it. What'd you do with the money that you made? We put a good chunk down on it, but we also use some of the money for just to upgrade ourselves, you know, a better car, furniture, upgraded our lifestyle a lot. No, that's lifestyle inflation. They should have they should have just bought another Queen Anne house and done the same thing again. Made another, you know, $75,000 of profit. Keep doing that. Keep buying more of those homes. And we wanted something different. I told my wife there was this one house. Oh, that's a classic shot. I love this shot with the water in the background, with the convertible down. This is perfect. The housing market did crash um, at that time. You know, and it was a gradual slide. I mean, you could feel it, but you really didn't believe it. And you kept thinking it's gonna turn around, it's gonna turn around, and it never did. For two or three years, prices on houses just kept going down and down and down. Yikes, that's, that's rough. Now, the, the good side with that is that if you had the finances to, to basically ride it through, you're sitting on a ton of profit, and in the meantime, you could have rented out the house for a decent amount, but that's tough. If that house is empty and it's going down in value and you have to pay for it, that adds up. So that was- Look at that, they rented out the house. That was the right move to make, and if they still hold it, guaranteed they made a lot of money on it. Yeah. You could still rent it out for what the mortgage was. Yeah. So even though it was like a pretty terrible situation, it was you, still manageable, just kind of- That's the issue with planes. You get one plane up ahead and it's the entire way. Ugh. Then you gotta wait like a minute for that plane to finish going on its way and then you can start again. When I see the house in good shape and being well cared for now, it actually makes me feel good that we sold it and quit renting it. Oh, uh, just imagine though, had you kept renting it, you would, you would have been up a lot more money on that. Plus the rents have gone berserk. I guarantee, especially in this area, rents are skyrocketing. I think a beginning teacher is going to enter at about 50,000. Salary increases by taking more classes and by experience and getting a master's degree and getting what they call nationally board certified. Like if you're a teacher with 15 years, you're making close to 100K now. Wow, look at that. Middle school teacher, almost $100,000 a year. Well, here's the thing. I mean, a lot of people have mentioned teachers are grossly underpaid. So, uh, 100, but $100,000, that, that, that's good. But then again, 15 years to build up to that. So uh, you, you gotta really enjoy kids and teaching. One of my passions is golf. It's funny, I was about to make a golfing joke because like, you know, once you retire, every, every guy goes to golf. And I didn't say it, and I wish I did. Last summer, my wife agreed at my urging to join a country club. It's about $500 a month for the two of us. That's not bad, $500 a month for a country club where you could golf unlimited? That's a great deal. I know golf courses that you could pay like $50, $80, even 100 bucks on the, on the nicer ones, just for a round of golf. So if he goes golfing a few times a week, this pays for itself. This 2008 Audi, which I bought in 2016 was 13,500. What a great price on that car. Gosh, 13,500 guaranteed too. It's probably worth right now. $13,500. I don't think he's lost any money on that car at all. Having a hundred dollar a month cell phone bill is like nothing. Cable, internet, um, Spotify, you know, your music, sound, whatever. There's so many add-ons that just pile up and and since people have them taken out of their credit card or their checking account, you don't even see them. They're just gone. That's so true. See, I forget what it was, but it was something like uh, the average person has like several items recurring every single month that they don't even use that they've forgotten about. So, uh, you know what? I, I sh I'm sure if people just went through their statements for the last six months and just identified the things that they don't use that they need to cancel, probably save about a hundred bucks a month, give or take. And if you're a millennial today and you have the ability to live at home, there's nothing wrong with that. If you can do it, to help save you money so you're ready for a move, it's smart. Don't be embarrassed about it. I agree with that. If you have a great relationship with your parents and you don't find that it hinders your ability to grow as a person, 
Live with your parents. Save the money. I don't get this rush to be like, oh, I just turned 18. I have to leave right now. No, if you could save the money. If your relationship is good, stay. My house will always be open to my kids if they need to come back for any reason. Shelby, you should take him up on that offer. Just move home. Save the money. You don't need to buy a fancy place in Palm Springs and rent it. No, no. Just move home. It's a good deal. Take him up on that deal. Save the money and just keep buying more of those, uh, those Queen Anne properties. That's what you got to fix them up. But anyway, great video. I want to see more of this, and if we could do more boomer monies, do one on your mom. Uh, find random people that are that are just cool. But uh, I love it. Great video. Thank you so much for making it, and uh, thank you so much for watching, hitting the like button, and most importantly, subscribing. So thank you guys so much for watching. Also, feel free to add me on Instagram and on the Iced Coffee Hour podcast because we post a new episode every single Sunday. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time.